Fourth game is Crystal Seeker 3D Platformer. Crystal Seeker 3D Platformer? Yeah, that's right, you heard me right. 3D games in Scratch. Most impressive 3D games I've ever seen on Scratch. Oh wow! This stuff is wild. Uh, this is one of the coolest game on Scratch because it's a full third-person controller. Uh, and most everything done here has to be done with some very advanced techniques. Attention to detail here is just immaculate. Usually with these 3D Scratch games everything is cute, but here we actually have a character. There's actually good level design too, like this platforming is pretty interesting. Like this whole 3D environment built entirely in Scratch. I don't see why people are confused on why this crazy divas made in Scratch. They basically just made their own version of reality. Except people think this is a way more impressive to be built on Scratch. Having a proper coding language like C++. Yes, it is impressive for someone to make a 3D engine. But if you're going to call him a god for it, cause Unity deaths too. Maybe Skull Guy was right. Perhaps there is nothing special about this game. It is nothing more impressive than creating a 3D engine in C++ or creating a 3D game in Unity. Just look at it. Everything about this game is uninspired. Player is literally seven pyramids. Enemies are not even 3D. This game just shoots. This is most generic 3D platformer you will ever play. Or is it? You see, this game is made in Scratch, while in other game engines you could just drag 3D stuff in and it works. In Scratch you have to create everything well from Scratch. Ok, but what it makes more impressive than creating a custom 3D engine in C++ for example? An answer is simply, Scratch is not meant for 3D. Only two available rendering options are either drawing 2D sprites or lines. Let's summarize. You can't render 3D shapes, and even if you could, it will be so slow that it will be impossible to make anything working in it. And on top of that, you must code everything yourself, from 3D rendering, object management and 3D collisions, to creating levels and designing game. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. This is a story how I made a 3D platformer in 2D game engine. Things were far from going smooth. I already know, in order to have 3D working, you will need to convert 3D points into a screen position. In other words, you need to project 3D points into a screen. And if you search how to do it on the internet, you will find this. If you wonder what even this monstrosity is, it is projection matrix. If you feel intimidated by it, don't worry. It turned out you don't even need that for 3D. Thanks to Math Math Math's full 3D tutorial, I finally find out how to make 3D work in Scratch. And that brings us to the first law of 3D. When an object goes far, it becomes really small. And in practice, this means this. The projected XY coordinates are calculated by dividing X and Y by Z value of point and then multiplying it by a focal length which is opposite thing of field of view. The bigger is it, the more zoomed it is. Therefore, you see less things. This is sufficient if your view is locked, the same way you're looking on phone all day. But what if we want to actually see world around us? That is what introduced us to the second law of 3D. Cameras aren't real. No wait, birds aren't real. Birds are actually cameras made by government to spy on us. <laughs> Not there actually drawn. Where was I? Oh yeah, in 3D, camera is a virtual object. This means even they have their 3D position and 3D rotation, they don't exist. Basically, your camera is always fixed. But if you want to move view to the left, you move whole world to the right. So every time you want to move the view, you just move everything in opposite direction. This applies same for rotation. 
Rotation? How you even rotate stuff? Rotation matrices. Luckily for us, our body math 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 simplifies them for us. The only thing left is only this. As you can see, when drawing line, we first subtract camera position as explained before, then rotate point using 3D rotation formulas, and then before drawing we need to check if that line is actually in front of camera by checking its Z distance from camera larger than some minimum distance which is called near plane in 3D. Then, after doing other line stuff, we project the points and draw the line. But honestly, who will play a game made out only of lines? Okay, apparently many people want to play games made out only of lines. But why stop here? What about triangles? Every 3D game now knows all 3D stuff is made out of triangles. But you can draw triangles in Scratch. Only sprites and lines, remember. But what if you use lines to draw triangles? Ah, if you find the in circle of triangle and then draw a circle and then bunch of lines around it and you get a triangle. And you even can draw 8000 of these per second depending on the device. For reference, Super Mario N64 level have 1000 triangles. Does this mean you will have 8 FPS? No, because rendering takes only 50% of all performance, meaning it will be run at 4th FPS. Are all hops lost then? Of course not. First, there is no reason to draw all triangles in scene at once, and second, you could pretend it's 9083 and make the most low poly game error. Hmm, it looks kinda epic though. But before that, I skipped one crucial thing. How you get from a bunch of manually written cubes to the actual 3D model. In game engines, you just put the things inside and they work. But here, you need to code everything. 3D models can be represented in various ways, but the easiest one is the obj file. obj is basically a text which tells you first the positions of 3D vertices, then the indexes of vertices required to form a face. You remember connect the dots game, it's basically the same thing, just it connects triangle vertices. Now you can't simply put the file in scratch, you must copy and paste the whole file inside a block making the length of the block larger than Wall of China. After that you put all those data in bunch, bunch of lists, and then you spend 3 months desperately trying to make it work, and it still not works. Somebody please help me. And finally, models in scratch. Now let's start making the 3D platformer. If you observe carefully, you will notice that 3D platformers are 2D platformers which are 3D. This means only thing we need to check is player colliding with the ground. And if so, make it doesn't touch the ground. For simplicity, our player is treated as a sphere. Now I'll give you 5 seconds to tell me how you can check that sphere located on position X, Y, Z with the radius R is colliding with a triangle defined with 3 vertices. Time starts now. I have no idea, right? So why you think I would? I'm a game dev, not a mathematician. So you think that made me give up? Yes, that made me give up. Thanks for watching and see you in... I found a book. And that book has sphere triangle collision, written in C++. And I took the code and converted it to scratch. In only one day, after spending whole month trying to create it by myself. Therefore, we can induce third love of 3D. Don't through to reinvent the wheel. If you could find the exact thing in some random book from the internet. Now, when we have collision, I finally can create the... Um, it took me 13 months to create the final game. You are for sure starting to get feeling why. Performance. Scratch is slow. Scratch is slow. Scratch is slow. First, no more of Bandicoot, and will come our pyramid guy. 3D enemies? 2D enemies. Levels are practically not hiding that they are made of a bunch of triangles, lines and sprites. I even had to create a 3D editor just to try to get as much performance as possible. And that leads us to the next part. Game design. You can always put a bunch of triangles and lines 
and call it a game. But the real thing what game needs is a soul, a thing which will separate it from other games. There are a lot of 3D platformers made in Scratch. I wasn't the first, but there are only few with a soul like a Ninja 3D or Dot World. So what is so unique and impressive about this game? Well basically this game is superior to all the Scratch 3D platformers in each aspect. Player is not a cube, levels aren't a bunch of cubes and have actual themes, grassland, ice and jungle. Levels are much bigger and have a lot of unique features like seesaws, ice physics and swing ropes. But yes, compared to famous 3D platformers like Crash, Mario and Spyro, this is indeed the most generic 3D platformer you will ever play. But the real value of it is the actual fact it is made in Scratch, a 2D game engine. On the first glance, there is nothing astonishing. But when you look behind the scenes, there are a lot of things going on. For example, one of the main problems is rendering. You see, all real 3D rendering systems use method called Z-buffering. This means that each pixel on screen have its unique Z value. Then each triangle which needs to be rendered have exact pixels on which it is projected. For each of those pixels, it checks two values, the current Z value and the triangle's Z value. Z value is basically a camera distance. So in other words, the triangle is closer to the camera than a previous distance of pixel, then that Z value gets overwritten. Additionally, the pixel color also changes value. This method would also work on Scratch if there was no one simple problem. Yeah, it's literally unplayable. You see, all those calculations are normally executed on GPU while on Scratch you're forced to use CPU for 3D and rendering. In order for you to understand this, imagine CPU as CEO of the company while GPU is executive team. CEO of one company have many skills and serves as a central decision maker and coordinator of tasks within the system. A few moments later. The GPU specializes in graphic related tasks and parallel processing. A little longer than a few minutes later. There is a reason executive team exists and there is a reason they put GPUs in computers. Boring. Excuse me, what? Boring. Wait, why you are here? Your explanation is lame. Oh, why it is? Ah, look me, I'm smart. I use complex terms. Executive team. Parallel processing. Specialized capabilities. What do you mean? I'm just trying to help viewers understand it. And you're terrible in doing that. Okay, then I will let you explain it to them. Sure. So, CPU is like the brain guy. And GPU is like the people who do the labor for him. When GPU is gone, it's like the brain guy has to do all his job alone. So, he struggles. You can't use GPU in its full power on Scratch. So that's why it's, it is slow doing 3D stuff. You know what? Leave my video. <laughs> it was much better, right? No. Okay, no. chill. I'm leaving. So, how I solve this problem? I optimize rendering for CPU. How do I that? Painter's algorithm. Like the Z buffer, whose basic unit is a pixel. In Painter's algorithm, basic unit is a triangle or any other 3D object. Each object is treated as a single 3D point and then using sorting algorithm you get in which order object should be drawn. Just like the painter knows the order of drawing objects. And from manually rendering 100,000 pixels, you only need to draw a few hundred objects. So if it's so faster, why no other game engines uses it? Because of happy little accidents. We don't we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. You see, there are many problems with this method. First, if two objects are overlapping, there is no way to draw the intersection. One will be always above the second. But at least you can simply solve that problem with just making levels that way two objects never overlap. But the main problem is simply that this method never could work fully. 
Look at this image. There is no way to draw it using Pinter algorithm. There is just no correct order. All orders are incorrect. The same thing happens in the game. There could be never a correct order. So what I did? I made rendering prioritizes player. If it isn't that way, often player could be rendered below ground in specific situations. And I made bottom part of the flying islands very long to minimize the graphical artifacts. I also had to manually place and check what combinations of position would work the best. And sometimes even remove triangles which make problems. Now let's take a look on the gameplay itself. First the player movement. Unlike other popular platformers, players have zero special abilities. You can only move and jump and that's all. No attacks, no wall jumps, no jump boosts, no anything. Just all plain pyramid guy jumping around. On top of that, walking is very slow. The main reason of this is that if you make player goes too fast, due to lack of performance, it is possible to go through solid platform, which is, well, kinda bad. So considering all this, you will think that this game has nothing interesting to offer. But there is one thing, and that thing is what gives it the soul. Speed running. Speed running? Didn't I say just before that moveset is literally walking and jumping? What is so interesting in trying to beat level as fast as possible when your options are so limited? But in reality, whole game is secretly designed for speed running. Don't believe me? Just watch this. Ah. You will think this is a bug, but in reality it's indeed a feature. Each enemy type have possibility to help you pass the level faster. But that isn't the only thing. Boosting circles, ropes and even axes, all of those could be used for increasing your speed. And on top of that, I added time trial mode, where collecting coins freezes time for the value of the coin. This adds additional dimension to the speedrunning levels, as now you must decide which coins are worth and which are not. Beating level within given time gives you a time crystal, which is one of the requirements of unlocking bosses. Bosses? Yes, there are three of them. First, the boss of Grassland section. Dual Bull. All bosses are very simple, especially this one. Only thing you have to do is to go far from it and dodge the charge. Each time it hits, fence becomes weaker until it disappears completely. Then finally, when the bull charges into empty space, it falls into abyss and you win. Overall, nothing special, but at least still better than this abomination. Next is Tech Mech, which have a bit more complex moveset, punching you with a shield or shooting snowballs from its cannon. Once a while it sucks all snow from the environment, forming a giant snowball and throwing it in air. Your goal is to lure the robot into the spot where the giant snowball is going to land. 3 hits and you won. The last one and most unique one is Slog Frog. Your goal is The frog is jumping from one island to another and trying to hit you with its tongue. Once a while, it will break one island, making the challenge even harder. And at the time it doesn't have any places to go, it just falls and you win. Essentially, they're nothing mind-blowing and innovative. It's just nice to have them in to give the game some variety. So far, I was only speaking about good things from this game. But what about bad things? It's impossible for a game to be perfect. First, as said, I will make the moveset more complex and faster. Also, one of the biggest complaints I got for my 500,000 viewers was the requirements for bosses are just stupid, which I agree. For example, third boss have 300 coins and 4 time crystals unlocking requirement. This means, first you will have to play same levels you previously have played 2 more times 
and even having to be much better than previous attempts due to time trials. Additionally, coin limit is not correctly introduced, meaning you could just casually enjoy game because you missed few coins, you will have to play same levels again in order to get enough coins. Resulting, you have to play literally each level at least twice in order to beat final level, which is for sure stupid. Why don't I remove limit now? I just don't like modifying my older games so I can forever remember my mistakes. Also, one of the common complaints is that the enemies are too deep, which I can see why. Just having 3D enemies would make it much better looking. The reason I even made them 2D is because I was desperate to gain as much performance as possible even at the cost of visuals. This was one of the most revolutionary projects on Scratch ever made. It has shown to many the true potential of Scratch. It is not for nothing one of the most liked Scratch game ever. In future I plan making sequel to it, so be sure you're subscribed you don't miss my future projects. Next, as promised, I will cover surprisingly even better game than this, Vectoid TD 3D. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Also shout out to my brother who made models and animation for the game and several original soundtracks.